Hello everyone, uh, today we are going to dive into my home automation project. Uh, we have a Staples Connect, five GE smart switches, and probably not going to work because it's Belkin and I don't think that the Staples Connect supports it yet as a Belkin outlet switch. So first off is obviously the hub. First thing that they're going to tell you to do is either go out in Google Play or the iPhone App Store and get the Staples Connect app. Inside the box we have the unit that looks Oh, it's actually really light. Um, kind of look a kind of a, almost looks like a black um, Apple Airport Extreme. I'll have them side by side so you can actually see the comparison. Second, obviously, a power adapter, and third is the Ethernet cord. Okay, so what I did, I plugged in my D-Link directly into the back of my Airport Extreme. So the first, obviously, step one is download the Staple Connect app. All right, so the first step was obviously registering an account. Uh, you do that with a basic email and password. Tap your hub to get started. Obviously, I have the D-Link model. Connect the hub. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the hub and the other end of the free port and your wireless router, which I already did. Make sure that the hub and your iPhone are on the same network. Plug the cable, uh, power cable in and the hub on the wall. Hilariously well, enough, um, I was just saying that I plugged in my D-Link, obviously to my wireless router, but I totally forget forgot to um, connect it actually to the back. I actually was just sitting there dangling uh, before I mentioned the icons. Obviously the cloud or internet icon I'm assuming now was amber. Now it is obviously green because it is definitely hardwired into my router. So make sure you plug in both ends of the cable. After when I registered the hub, it actually said that there was an incompatible version with the hub and to disconnect the power and actually plug it back in. So I did that and now the other icons are gone. Um, I have an amber and green uh, light obviously being illuminated with the amber flashing for some reason. However, I did name my hub and I am connected to it. All right, we are in the app. So obviously the first um, method of business here is to connect um, some switches, uh, which obviously I have to install. I guess what I'll do now is I'll jump from the app and actually start talking about the switches. The in-wall um, GE12722 in-wall smart switch. So I decided to go with these. Um, number one, they're based on Z-Wave, which the connected hub, or Stables Connect, I should say, uh, is apparently compatible with. Um, there's been a lot of mixed reviews about um, these ver these switches in particular, the version, I guess, that was there before. I have absolutely no idea, but uh, I've been trying to do my, you know, my due diligence on trying to keep current with all the issues coming up about the home automation. You know, Apple and Google is going to be jumping into the game pretty soon. So I'm only assuming, I'm kind of making a bet here that uh, they're going to try to make able to connect to obviously a lot of other devices. And the reason why I say that is because I think it would be pretty stupid for them to create their own line of things and not take into consideration that home automation has been around for quite some time already. Um, you might be asking yourself, well, why didn't you do the Smart Things Hub? Why didn't you do a Revolve? Smart Things Hub was a very close second for me. Um, the Wink Hub was also another close. Um, and ADT, I really didn't want to go into uh, the security um, because I'm going to be doing that myself. But Smart Things and Wink uh, were very close uh, second and third options for me. Um, and obviously it just came down to uh, a couple of reviews recently that I saw and kind of had to dig around just because Staples Connect isn't really covered by a lot of people and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this review. I heard a lot of really great reviews about the sta uh, Staples Connect working um, a lot more fast with Z-Wave uh, devices than um, the Wink and the SmartThings Hub. There's a big delay apparently in between them. They're all priced very similarly. I think actually the Wink Hub is actually only 50 bucks. Staples Connect, I kind of jumped on it because for whatever reason there was a pricing glitch on Amazon and I got it for $49.99. I have no idea how that worked out, um, but I checked uh, today and it's already back up to 100 bucks. So let's open the box. So the first thing is, looks like a manual. Um, yeah, it's gonna, looks like a manual. And the switch itself. All right, great. Um, we obviously have our loads which is great, and our line and our neutral wire. This is exactly what we want to see. ZW4005 is the model for this switch. Like further into the box, they actually give you the first face mask. If the white doesn't fit you and you want to do a beige one, you can go for it. This is probably going to be used to bridge into the neutral. So there we have it. We have um, a switch ready for the wall. Um, I'm gonna jump downstairs, obviously turn off some breakers first, duh, and um, see if I can throw this in a wall and um, See if I can get it working. 
Okay, so we're downstairs now. Um, I have me, my first light I'm gonna actually gonna be doing is my rear porch light. I'm gonna be popping out lights, switches, after obviously when you uh, turn off the circuit for whatever you're gonna be touching and make sure that the box is going to be dead um, with a uh, uh, voltometer um, or you know uh, one of those detector things that actually detect if it's going to be hot or not. Just absolutely make sure that whatever you're gonna be touching electrically is going to be completely shut off. Anyway, after when you've assured that, just pop out the switches, and this is pretty standard, they make it really painless too. Um, what I actually noticed on the walk down here was uh, instead of the typical, um, you know, fitted around the screw head kind of a de design, actually the light's not kind of horrible, there we go. Fitted around the screw head, tighten the screw, um, as you see here, and actually leaves the open bits of the wire. Um, what they've done is you actually fit it into the top holes here down the top holes here and that this actually pinches it from the other side so effectively what you want to be doing is you're gonna have the wire go in and none of the copper shell and uh, you know essentially just match up what you see on your current switch now these switches do require a neutral wire the grouping like in here obviously use the supplied um, neutral wire uh, extension here take this off tighten it back up and then put it into the unit you should be all set. all right so uh, i have the new switch in the old switch obviously out um, and we should be all set to go a couple things about the switch right off the bat first of all there's a lot of people complaining about um, stripping the screws first of all you're going to really have to want to crank this on to a point where it strips uh, these things for me are on there really tight uh, I would be absolutely amazed if these ever came out, let alone putting it back into the box. These are not going to go anywhere. Uh, so don't go crazy with it like you're tor you know, torquing down hub bolts or lug nuts for a car. Um, but obviously you want to make sure that they're not going to be moving around. Second thing is, is uh, these things ship with the, um, the opening for this uh, actually uh, open already. So the only thing you have to do is just turn it right after when you insert the cable. Do not turn it left trying to loose it. Um, it's already open, so you fit the wire in and then go right and then obviously tighten it down. Um, other than that, this should be perfectly good, so I'm just going to continue, put it back on the wall, uh, put it back to the screws, turn on the circuit breaker, and uh, test it out. Okay, so um, everything's back on, the power back is back on as well. Um, I've obviously fitted the switch back into the box, turn it all down, it should be all set to go. So, uh, actually really cool, I didn't know that this actually happened, um, but there is a almost like a night light so you know where the switch is at night. Um, this is a rocker switch, so it's not a one-way like you see over here with this one. That's for my dining room, and then this one obviously doing my porch. One thing I did notice about this switch is there is almost exactly a 500 millisecond delay when you turn it on and when you turn it off. Okay, so there's... Everybody says that this should actually be pretty easy to do. Let's, uh, device assistant, add device, device type, it's a light, choose manufacturer, GE, find device. Oh, those are actually light bulbs. Now let's just try add manually, see what that does. Um, it's a Z-Wave switch. Prepare your device, please, blah, 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 add. Oh, it just goes out and searches for it. I have to like press it. Oh yeah, you have to press it down when it's searching, I guess. Setting up the device. The device setup is complete, it says. Um, add complete. Wow, okay, done. Uh, the device name, I will do... Back yard. Oops, oh, nice, Brian porch room I guess I'll unassign it because I don't want to have it in like my living room and stuff kind of its own thing category I'm just gonna do a light because that makes sense to me because <laughs> it's only that's all it's doing it's just doing lights so finish okay lights backyard porch see if we got it cool all right, we, we are turning on and off switches. Here's the, oops.
Nine. So that's it. I've actually connected my front porch, my back porch, my master bedroom light. Um, there is a kitchen light I actually added as well, along with my floodlights on the side of my house, all which have that on and off switch. What's really great, and I didn't go over, is in the app you can actually set on a, a bunch of conditionals, almost like the if this, then that um, service that you can see with a lot of the home automation systems. Now the Staple Connect has a lot of conditionals. You can get sensors that turn on uh, switches or lights or uh, thermostats depending on the temperature outside. What I have so far is essentially when the sun goes down, the front porch light goes on. For me, that's making my world right now. It's really great. Besides the fact of being able to turn on and off my lights when I'm away, I'm definitely going to be expanding the system into the Z-Wave front door lock. These sensors, including window sensors, a moisture sensor, a water sensor from my basement underneath my tankless water heater, as well as an alarm system if one of those get triggered. I'm, I will definitely be creating a um, another video after this if I go into those switches. Um, but definitely make sure to leave your comments below with any questions. Uh, if you want to have any kind of you know elabor elaboration to uh, you know anything that I've done with my system, or if you have any questions in terms of you know sensors, whatever else, definitely add a comment below, and I can see if I can help. All right, thanks.